Welcome to Adults Only Comedy Berlin. Today we have Devin Gray. Hello. Hello. That's me. It's you. Yeah, I'm alive. I made it here. <laughs> you did. I'm so glad you're alive. Uh, that's that's the main thing. You've come down to my funny. When you came into my apartment, you were like, it's so good to see how other people live. <laughs> it's true. It's nice. I, I took the bus. It was a, it was a good time. <laughs> Went down uh, south, yes. It's very green where you live. It's very green, so the pollen, you know, making me sneeze. Yeah, yeah. I just had to take an antihistamine too. But um, but there was something we were talking about right before we started recording that I wanted to get back to. I wanted to loop around to it was racism in Asia. That's an interesting topic because okay. you're moving to Singapore. Yeah, moving to Singapore. And then there was my marriage. Your marriage, all right. Yeah. So, like, uh, yeah. Or you know, we can go and see if they both tie in with racism in Asia. (laughs) And there's definitely some (laughs) crossovers for sure. (laughs) Because immigration uh, comes into it, as well as we honeymooned in Asia. You honeymooned in Asia. Mm Mm-hmm. It's a good. That's a good marriage right there. Because you had like, you know, we didn't have the real money to do Hawaii, so you were like Bali. Let's go. No, we didn't do Bali. We did Cambodia. Even oh, cheaper. like real, like proper, proper, proper. That's a good, that's a good honeymoon. What, Sihanoukville? Uh, we went there. We went to um, Phnom Penh. Uh, the Phnom, Phnom. Yeah, we spe- we love Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh, we spent most time, but also like Kampot and um, up uh, Siem Reap, of course, and uh, Batambong, and uh, yeah. And then you you kept the drugs all the way back to Australia or did no. you <laughs> you didn't mule them or no we did not mule them no, that no, sounds no. like the normal mule route you know oh really yeah. no we didn't we just we got the we got the drugs <laughs> <laughs> in Kampot okay now we can take it anywhere actually we kept Kampot and then we went to Sahanokville and then that's where we got the weed and then that okay. we, it was like it's so cheap and they give you so much and so yeah. we actually had to just like throw it away when we left because it was too much weed but see yeah, in when was this? What year? This was in 2013. So it must have been nice, like nice beach town. Oh, yeah. Now, Destroyed. it's casinos. Like, oh, really? It's all casinos, just like the whole place. It's oh, like, shit. Uh, the Chinese came and they bought a whole bunch of land and they built casinos. Huh. And because it's Cambodia, you can you can gamble there. So the whole of Asia just goes to Sihanoukville to enjoy. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was like, it was really chill little beaches. Yeah. Like, it was a little bit more intense than, like, for beaches, like, um, Kep was really chill. Uh, mm-hmm. And Kampot's, like, riverside beaches. So it was still a little bit hectic for beaches, like, lots of bars and stuff on the on the beachfronts. But, like, no, like... Now it's casinos. Shit. It's like, you have... To, it's still cheap. Yeah. But you have to go sit, you know, on a, on a deck chair instead of a... Okay. Like, there's no hammocks anymore. Okay, In Sienokul yeah. specifically. I think Kep and Kampot, they'll still... A bit more chill. We have, to yeah. go, we have to go see. And then, yeah. So, yeah, honeymoon there. And actually, we spent our first honeymoon night um, in Singapore. My parents bought us a very nice hotel room at a very like, bougie hotel. That's exciting. That's a, like a, a wedding present? Like, okay, That was the wedding your... present, yeah. We so, had like a butler. That's even better. That's, <laughs> <laughs> and like a bathtub. Excuse me, butler, could you... Yeah. Run me a bar. Yeah, yeah. I've always wanted to do that. Yeah, baths, two showers. There were like eight different or 12 different restaurants in the hotel. Two showers? I don't know. I use both. It's like, we just got married. Get the fuck out my shower. <laughs> <laughs> and when we arrived, there was even like a happy, happy wedding night cake. Like a whole cake. We were only there for one night. It was like, how are we going to eat a whole cake? We I can think. I can think of four ways to do that. Yeah, you know what? We should have used it. I think uh, we, you know, it was. Did it you was, have a cake when you got divorced? Uh, no, but I did have a party. You did. You, did, oh, you should have got a cake. I should a have a Star cake. Wars cake and have it say, may divorce be with you. May, oh, I like That's it. That's a good one. That's That's ha- yeah, a friend good. of mine did that. That's I was like, that is idea. the coolest thing I've ever seen. Maybe I can get divorced again and do it right. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the night is young. Mm-hmm. But divorce, I was very excited to have a divorce party because it took me a while to get divorced because we got married for, um, well, we were in love, but it was also for his visa. And so... What... what, what? So what, what what situation were you in that he needed a visa? Where was he? What, what so were we were in Australia okay. and uh, he is from Colombia and he was in Australia on his ex-wife's visa, ah. her student visa. He was her husband. That makes sense. Anna loves the red flags. Oh, I loved <laughs> the red flags. I like, I'm, I'm much better now. I, I, it takes me six weeks, but I identify them and I leave. Okay. I'm much more efficient. Okay. But um, but yeah, he uh, when we got together, 
Um, he was planning to, he was applying for a visa on his own right, like on his own back as a musician. And he expected to get two years. And it's they two gave red him, flags, just so you know. Oh, totally. Right. <laughs> okay. Totally. Um, he expected to get two years of that visa and they gave him two weeks. Oh, or, oh sorry. Two months or two weeks. And then it was like, oh, fuck. Like, I need to sort this out, like, immediately. Exactly. And we looked at all the options. It was like, maybe we could move to New Zealand, Canada, the UK. And I was planning to do a master's in Australia at that point. Columbia and so was like, wasn't on the list. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, that would have solved it, I think. Right? No, he did not want to go to... Be, he didn't want to be in Colombia. He had a band in Australia and he was wanting to, like, do his music there. And, uh, that's and obviously the muling doesn't help. Oh, come on. <laughs> Yeah, we never did cocaine together. Um, but uh, but yeah, so the day before his visa ran out, it was the day that we got married. And then while we were in Cambodia, uh, it was a five-week honeymoon because we needed that time to sort out his next visa. Funny though, Cambodia doesn't need visas for Colombia. And so you guys could just go. Yeah. So yeah. that, there you go. Why not Cambodia? <laughs> you Actually, we fell in love with Cambodia. We were like, we should move here. We should start a business yeah, here. you could start a band in, Kilo- in Cambodia. Absolutely. Yeah. There's some great music, even though, you know, a lot of people, you know, but like, uh, yeah, there's, there's population issues and, and stuff, but um, with, with the whole genocide thing. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, there's history there. There's history there, but we, yeah, we love Cambodia. And the idea was we we're going to start a little cafe or a little hostel or something. And it um, would have been a casino now. <laughs> <laughs> we would be rich now. God damn it. Why did I leave them? Uh, you think they got paid for the land? That's not a thing. <laughs> no, no. The land was owned by the by China before, and they just yeah. came and like, "Oh, this is ours now. We we helped you with." No way. There's, there's a whole bunch of like little things in Asia where people share land. Share sharing. It land. happens in South Africa as well. China owns a lot of South Africa. Actually, yeah. China owns a lot of Australia too. Like yeah. they've bought a lot. It's like McDonald's, the real estate business. You know that whole like thing. It's like McDonald's doesn't sell hamburgers; they sell real estate. So. Oh, like they yeah. buy like the most like prime locations and then they franchise out to those people and the people are paying for the location. They're not paying to own a McDonald's. Yes. So you don't make McDonald's itself doesn't make money from hamburgers. They make money from prime real, real estate. estate. Yeah. China did the same thing. They're like, oh, cool. Let's go and, you know, buy, give money to every country in the world. Mm-hmm. And then we'll just like take some of their land, mm-hmm. you know, and then later on in life when they're like, oh, we need a casino. Now we have the land. It's yeah. pretty simple. It's very simple. It's um. It's basic extortion. The Colombian yeah. guy should know about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, I do think he was like his family was definitely connected to stuff. Like there was a there was some kind of relative who was a former like president, and oh, okay. Colombian presidents are pretty known for being. Yeah, that's why he had to leave. Like his his parents kicked him out. They were like, "You don't want to be part of the family business. You go start a band in Australia. <laughs> see, see if I care." <laughs> Nah, he actually spent most of his life, he grew up, uh, well, he was in Colombia and then they moved to Miami, classic, okay. classic route. And then he was in Miami for a long time, but then he chose to, then he studied, then he studied in, um, uh, back in Colombia and then he studied again in like Boston and then he went, moved back to Colombia and then to Australia. Okay. And then he met the love of his life or so he thought. Yeah, we both thought, we both thought, but that was, that was well before I, I understood what red flags were. That's fair. You, you said 2011, 2013? Yeah. 20, 2012 is when we met. And like 10 years ago. Yeah. Oh, God. That's a long time. Dude, I, I was thinking that on my, on my flight back to Australia recently. It was like, oh, my God, I got married 10 years ago. Like, Yeah. It would have, <laughs> you would have had a big party this year. Yeah, <laughs> right. We would have had a 10-year wedding yeah. anniversary. You would have got a cool gift. I don't know what it is on 10 years, but... Is it like gold or something like that? Oh, he would have, it would have been his gift. Like it would have been, <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten anything. It would have been rerouted to him for sure. That was how he operated. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a good one. It was, uh, it was, that was a really damaging relationship. <laughs> yeah. So you, you're giving me anxiety because I, I actually just recently got married. <laughs> as you, but you're as 30. You know. I'm 30. Actually, I think age has nothing to do with it. If you're happy and it's going well and you're both feeling good and not feeling like parts of you are being murdered by the other one then it's all good yeah i'm still allowed to do comedy exactly yeah i'm allowed to come to noicon in the middle of the day to visit anna barras in her apartment in my funny little apartment <laughs> it's all right there's all like video evidence don't worry guys <laughs> i'm wearing it i'm wearing the ring <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this this yeah this is my wedding ring 
I've got a joke about it, but it's not uh, a joke. It's like a, this part, the zipper on my arm is my um, is the wedding ring. He also has that. And then we both got different different images above the zip. Okay, what is your image above the zip? Um, my image is uh, the god of the forest um, from I think I, I think Princess I Mononoke. I think I in Skyrim. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, Princess Mononoke, Hayao Miyazaki's film. Um, and it's got the little tree, the, the, the tree, the forest god then has little tree spirits on its antlers. And um, the god of the forest like gives life and takes life away, and just this very calm, nice symbol of nature and the life death life cycle, and uh, yeah, all, the all cool things. things. And what was his? His was um, a stop sign, <laughs> like <laughs> just a, a flag, <laughs> a red flag, <laughs> all black and white. But uh, um, but it was a he had this um, tree design. It was like a digital tree. It was like a, yeah, like a, like a, with a, a, what do you call it? Like a tree trunk and then like the branches going out and the leaves. And it was like a, like a binary tree. Like kind of like a, yeah, like a, a chipboard. Like, you know how they, the, there's okay. all those little like silver lines of solder on a, on a motherboard. Like a motherboard? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like that um, tree. And that was the design on his first album. Um, okay. With his band that he was had in his and the zip as well, zip. and he had the zip underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we both knew that we wanted images that were our own, connected to the wedding thing because we we were realistic. Like it might not like getting a wedding ring in the form of a tattoo is pretty hardcore. So we're like, let's yeah, just, that's fair. Let's make sure that we also have a part of it that's like us. Just like that's just, just yeah. us individually. Because there's nothing worse than getting a really bad tattoo. Yes. Would you like to see? Oh, you've got a really bad tattoo. I've got, I've got three tattoos. So I got this one. Okay, this is I a... I like this one. I like this. This is like a little dinosaur on From a Google. desert. From Google? So if you go on Google okay. and you have no internet, you can play this little dinosaur game. Oh. And then he like jumps over trees and shit like I that. I don't know you could play a game with no yeah. internet. Yeah. Do you have internet? You'd switch it off and we'll go on Google Chrome. Okay. I'll oh, well, you got Mozilla there. It yeah. doesn't matter. And then this one, my wife and I got together. She has one as well. Oh, that's cute. It's a little... It's like, an octopus. little octopus, yeah. And we wanted that when we were holding hands, they would face each other. Aww. But we fucked it up. They, they like, go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to get into it. And then when I was... <laughs> I bet that was messy. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't a good conversation that we had. Uh, and then when I was younger, I, yes. got, I got the most gangster tattoo in the world. Uh, let's have a look. Please don't, uh, don't get scared. Oh wow! Look at this. It's like a, it's like a tribal. There's a shark. The fact that you said tribal is the is the is, is the embarrassing part. There's, there's a fish. There's a fish. There, I thought it was a shark. There's like two fish. No. There's a, a lion at the top. Okay. And it looks a very scorpion in the in there somewhere. The, okay, so turn back so I can see. So there's a oh yeah, there's a scorpion. It looks like there's a shark and and then a fish and yeah. then. So it's okay. like Pisces, Scorpio, and Leo. My mom, my dad, and myself. Oh, that's so cute. You yeah. got, is it? Oh, it's so cute. You got star signs. Is it? You basic bitch. It's also tribal, so I'm a basic bitch times two. <laughs> Oh my god! It's and nice. it's bi- it's huge. It's, <laughs> it's like the, it's like basically my whole. I was like, I'm gonna get it covered up. What can I cover it up with? Dude, nothing. A square. Dude, nothing. That's like yeah. Only, no, but like it's it's good to have had to have these things. Like um, not that big. <laughs> <laughs> it's really like for I guess the the listeners can imagine, but it's a good like. 10, 10, cent- 10 centimeters wide and like 15 centimeters, yeah, I'd say, long. Or maybe a bit more, it's, yeah. It's the biggest thing. It's the it's biggest big. thing I have. And that was your first tattoo. My first, Look, 16. this is my first tattoo and it's huge. Like, my it's, wedding ring is huge. But it looks good. Yeah, I think it's cool. But that's because I designed it and I, you know, like... You thought about it. I, I, I had wanted tattoos for a long time. And so my wedding, like, getting married was actually just, like, a nice excuse for me to finally get one. It was like, all right, let's do this. Let's do and this. Also, and also... Yeah. Thanks, mom. I'm doing it. You should get married and a tattoo. Yeah. Same day. Let's go. Exactly. Actually, I had to get it like a week before so it wasn't like covered in ointment and shit. Uh, so, but I had to like hide bepanthin. it. Yeah, bepanthin. And I, uh, so we had to get the tattoo maybe like yeah a week before the marriage and then like hide it from everyone because otherwise they... Just wear know. long shirts. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It was, it was easy enough. <laughs> Anna, it's Australia. What are you doing? I'm cold. Thankfully, <laughs> Mel- Melbourne in April, it was it was freezing, uh, okay. so it was, it was fine. Nice. But um, but yeah, I've got I've got a few other tattoos. But I love all my tattoos actually. Like yeah, that one's cool. Yeah, this one's also cool. That was uh, before I left Australia. Right after I left my husband, I ex husband. It's okay if I say husband, Anna. It's yeah. all right. Um, he has a name. You can just say the name. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, after I left my ex husband, I got this guy, which is like all like so, the symbols of um, Chicken Run. Uh, exactly, Chicken Run. No, it's um, it's the house of Baba Yaga, who's a okay. witch in like Russian and Balkan um, folklore, and she has a house that has chicken feet yeah. that like flies and dances around the forest. And I was basically leaving Berlin, leaving Berlin, leaving Melbourne for Berlin. I I got rid of like I had a very established life in Melbourne. You know, I lived there all my life. I had like I had all the things, you know, I had a very decked out um, a home. Yeah, yeah. Wait, like an advertising job? Um, I had had like corporate jobs. Oh, I had I had all the things, you know. And so I was really like I had vinyls for days. I had a very domestically well stocked kitchen and appliances. And I had like good furniture and art and stuff. And this was when she was married. This is, uh. well, this was, <laughs> yeah. Before and after I had all these things as well. And so getting rid of all of these things and sort of packing it away and, and, and leaving the country that I'd lived all my life really, um, with just two suitcases. This was this tattoo is a reminder that like I will have a home Eventually. again. And, I mean you got a home, this is a dope place. It's a cute little it's a cute little home. It's a cute little home. I still have like you know, visions for having a, you know, a bigger space. And the, like, I had a really great apartment for two years in Berlin that had like beautiful old Polish floorboards, huge ceilings, lots of air and space and like two balconies. And just like, it looked like that Berlin, yeah. you know, old, great. nice apartment. Yeah. Yeah. And so I do want that again, but this is a, this is a nice little secure, what I need as a starting out full-time artist. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with this. No, no, it's it cute. also it's smells cute. good. It's got like a I don't know what what sort of um, like scent it is, but mm-hmm. there's there's something that's not like it's not normal. Okay, <laughs> what is it? It's like it's like a, like you know like it's either like someone what's that sage? Okay, yeah, but if you burn sage in here, I think I, my skin will probably burn. <laughs> yeah, you know, I haven't burned sage, but yeah, I suppose there's a, a mixture of things, but. It's it's a, it's a nice. It's not like you know when you walk in someone's house, you go, oh Jesus! Like yeah, no, I never yeah, had that. I was yeah, like, hey, yeah. what is that? It's good. Okay, it's good, good, good. All right, good. Thank God. If you came in my house, it would smell like spaghetti, like twenty four seven. I don't always know why. like spaghetti. Like always. <laughs> we don't we don't even make spaghetti that often. Like we make it on Mondays. I don't even know what spaghetti smells like though. Like I feel like the it would tomato be the sauce paste. that would. Okay, so it's the tomato sauce. Okay, yeah. all like, right. You know, right. like when you. And you heat it out like garlic and onions. Like it's a it's a good smell. It is a good smell. But it's not like this is like a wholesome smell. Okay. Mine's yeah. more like a like a, you're gonna get fat by coming in. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine. Yeah, I suppose. And I do like there's lots of scents that I use, and I I don't know. I um. But you're you're you've been living in Berlin now for like what a two year, year two, two years. years. Yeah, and two I'm years. leaving leaving yeah. on the thirty first of July. Thirty first of July. It's very soon. I'm actually going on Thursday to um, go look for an apartment in Singapore. Mm. Pretty exciting. I got four shows. I got four shows. Lined, five show, I got five shows lined up. Fuck yeah. How many days are you there for? Ten. Now it, sounds, now it sounds not cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you're going to be busy looking for apartments. Yeah, we're going to be with your, with your wife. And we're going to do like all the Singapore things, which I guess are go, Just out, eating, go outside. No? Yeah. Just eating. In yeah, like things you places. don't do here, you know, because if you go outside in Berlin, like in the daytime, it's nice mm. until a point. And that point is when you leave like your street. What? Yeah. I, I can't walk around in Berlin. Like it's Why? dog shit everywhere. I mean, I mean, I'm in Friedrichshain, right? So like you walk like that, just Frankfurt Alley, the station where I go down. Oh, Frankfurt Alley is a fucking mess, but like most solar train stations in Berlin are a mess. Yeah. The, the train, st- stay away from the train. If you just go to the park itself. <laughs> You'll be fine. Like I just there's came so here. There's so many. There's so many wonderful parks here, though. Like the parks are great once yes. you're in them. Yes. But yes. it's it's what happens around the edges of the parks that you that deter yeah. people from going in. I the thing is yeah, and I think the core difference in our relationships with Berlin is that I love the chaos and the mess and the like the yeah that those two things are really part of the character of the city for me it is it's a very it's a very big part of what berlin is as a whole yeah right so for me i've gone oh that's not i don't like that yeah but i i see how other people can do it that's why yeah. i would prefer like you know singapore over cambodia as well because cambodia has that same like exactly like grungy vibe to yes, it yes <laughs> exactly that's why i lo- like phnom penh is such a cool city yeah. where it was when i was there i loved it and it was because 
it was grimy as fuck. Yeah, but it was grungy. friendly. Like like oh, Manila, yeah. for example. I found Manila. Have you been to Manila? Yeah, yeah it's been I, good. I don't like. I, I wasn't. A, there were parts of Manila that I liked, but it's just so monstrously large, and there are so many big areas that are so like business. Whereas Phnom yeah. Penh, it was like this is like a really. It just felt like a really it's authentic like old capital. Western. <laughs> like yeah it's like there's a saloon over there over there is where you know you can have a shower if you want there's yeah. a gym yeah and it, like none of it has like real air conditioning like it's yeah, yeah or okay. it's not, and there's just fucking the tuk-tuks are fucking what are they are they called tuk-tuks in Tuk, yeah. yeah they're just like they're just so much noise and so much and smoke and drinking and, and trying to rob you and like you have yeah. to know what you're doing yeah and these street vendors selling food that like if you eat you you know you You'd probably you die but you do you will anyway. die but you die anyway you do it anyway. I mean, you're there. You may as well, like, if you're going to die, die on holiday. I do love it. But you would hate Vietnam Canada. then. I, why? Because I haven't been to Vietnam. So yes. Vietnam, it, it's like a mixture of that. Like the. Because you lived in Vietnam for I how many years? Five years. Five Vietnam. years. That's so long. It was great. Like Vietnam, I, my personal opinion, Vietnam is the best Asian city, right? But oh, for, context, no one knows you're from South Africa. I'm from South Africa. Yeah. yeah okay. It's better, way better than Africa. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you, in Vietnam, you've got the chaos of like everything everything's chaos and like madness happening all, all at once yeah but it's very much a big city in terms of like uh, cape town or new york where mm -hmm. shopping malls and everything's nice and inside and but then you've also got like you walk in the street and there's like twelve thousand bikes like motorbikes coming at you at the same time so phnom penh is completely different where there is a lot of traffic but it's not twelve thousand bikes on yeah. one street right yeah 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 so you could still cross the street relatively easily yeah but then vietnam in uh, specifically ho chi minh city i think maybe you would like hanoi then yeah hanoi okay. is kind of like a mixture it's they've got that but it's like hidden away okay and the nice areas where you hang out is more like phnom penh okay yeah you might you might like it i do want to go because i um living in berlin for seven years i yeah i had like a lot of like i had a vietnamese family at one point um one of my workplaces i was the token white girl uh -huh. and um and they yeah like had really good vietnamese friends and um even and the like, culture here is great yeah like it's it's quite authentic actually yeah well because and there was just yeah because of the the east germany there was you know a huge huge um immigration yeah like exchange um vietnam to to germany and yeah there's just like I, I love these people and they were always just like, why haven't you been to Vietnam? You should come to Vietnam. You should come to... And so I do yeah. really want to go. You should go. Yeah. And if you want to experience a little bit of Vietnam in Berlin, there's a, a place... Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing advertising. They better it, give me money. They better. Um, it's on the way to Cosmic. There's like a Ban Mi place. Uh-huh. It's like... Oh, I know the one. Yeah. Uh, on the corner of... Um, like near Rosenthalerplatz. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there many times, actually. That's dope. That's it's good. good. It's good, Bang Me. Yeah. It's like the best one I've had in Berlin. I um I worked at a place called uh, Maison Han, and they were a Vietnamese coffee roastery, and they made really good Bang Me and really, like, legit all the food. And... That's what you want, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you go in Vietnam, if you go into, a, like, a coffee shop and get a Bang Me, they're always bad. But you have to go to like the lady who's got the dirtiest like cart. You gotta like, go the dirtiest, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, I, like it needs to like have some like blood like on it from like where <laughs> like drunk people in the middle of the night like fighting and then there's like you need that one. That's the one. It, look, it looks like you've never cleaned this cart. Yeah, I need to eat from this. I'm gonna eat from that. Cart. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> you're making me really want to go to Southeast Asia. Like I just haven't been to Asia for uh, my my brother and sister-in-law um, and their family are in Philippines right now because my sister-in-law is Filipina and um, yeah I've like I just miss yeah I talking about this is getting you, me you excited. You miss the chaos. I miss the. You like the chaos. And I love the yeah I, I love chaos and I also just the the climate's very like that tropical like real tropical yeah. And there's climate. comedy there now. Yes, because it's still a new scene, but uh, there's still there's comedy in all of these cities. There's comedy in Cambodia. There's, you're gonna have yes. like ten people in the audience, but oh, that's fine. Comedy is comedy. We have I've... ten people in the audience sometimes here. Oh, dude, my show last night, I had like five <laughs> people, and I had and two of them are these Russians that just didn't know how to laugh, like legitimately mm. didn't know. Like every comic that went up, they just I, didn't care. They, just, they just like eh. they just couldn't laugh. It was like they their, their laughter would be like, huh. And I mean, that would, that's something exactly, but that happened maybe once for each person's set, and they oh. would laugh at like the only thing they were laughing at it was our failure, which, like when we which 
fucking club was this? Which this was at Zeus Vagestan. This was at my show, Pimp My Jokes. That's one of the and better. So that's one of the better rooms as well. Louis, Bruno, Gory, and I—we all just had the worst sets of our lives. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it was but the joke the joke workshopping in the second half was really good and but like we all had like when I say the we Russians all, they were like they weren't there to like, they were like we're here to entertain and make sure that you have good jokes uh, yeah. I'm not here to laugh I'm here to write jokes <laughs> but they didn't really they, they had some they actually had some interesting a few interesting inputs on the on the joke workshopping workshop things and actually like spoke up we were really surprised that they could speak um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you understood English exactly <laughs> Oh my god! It was so like I haven't had one of those. I had one of those sets where I got off stage and like I felt like I had totally lost control and I was so angry. Like within the first minute of my set, I was so angry at them, and then it just like I felt like I was spiraling and eating and myself making it up worse, yeah. and making it worse. But then I watched my set back when I got home, and I was like, no, I was, was fine. fine. Like yeah. I was actually fine. Like what was going on in my head was actually not visible. Yeah, that's the professionalism. And I was out. like, wow. Like, yeah. I thought, like, I, I like I cried a little bit after my set and Gory was also like, Gory it was like, that was the worst set. Like, that was so horrible. And I was like, no, you did really well. But she also felt just so shit afterwards. And I felt so, I just, I just felt like I spiraled. Like, at the end of the set, I was like, I ended my set with, I haven't felt like I've wanted to self-harm in a very long time. Uh, has anyone here, <laughs> did anyone here self-harm as a teenager? It's not a good, it's not a good way to end a comedy set. It got like the best laugh of my whole fucking set. Oh, that, guys, and they were like, did anyone here self <laughs> And there was one guy that was like, yes, I used to use razor blades. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, I used to use my fingernails. Yeah. It's the Russian guy. No, yeah, it was a, a razor blade. <laughs> yeah, it would make more uh, sense, but no, he doesn't have the self awareness to self harm. But uh, <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> he's not. <laughs> Don't come back. <laughs> Imagine if he does. Oh well. Uh, but I was like, I was semi roasting him through most of my set anyway, and like they did laugh through it, but like the way I felt during it was so bad anyway. And so then I was like, well, and then I explained how I used to self harm, and then I was like, and you know, and uh, I think I'm gonna go do it now, and like everyone cracked up, and I was like, okay, and I left. Uh, and you know confirmed it's like jesus confirmed. fuck but like talking about wanting to self-harm at the end of my set like how out of but when i lo- watched it back i'm like actually it was fine i looked like were i they sitting together. in the front uh they were kind of little spotted around it was quite yeah, ununified that's... yeah okay which is because yeah. it, i don't know like this is gonna, i'm gonna sound like a dick when i say this but oh like, i love it love it yes a lot of the times you're doing a set and like i'm a very talkative to the audience i'm like hey so i don't pick on you but i i like it's part of my routine where I'm like, yo, what do you do? Where are you from? Where? Mm-hmm. A lot of the time, Ukrainians are in the front row. I'm just like, mm. oh, it's, it's if a, I have to listen, yeah. like it, it's a difficult topic because you, there's nothing you can say as a joke that's going to be cool about Ukraine, right? Yeah, But like really. when you're like, so what are you doing? And they tell you like, well, I'm waiting for my husband who's bringing guns to the border. I'm like, it's a comedy show. Yeah. Like you have declared <laughs> war on comedy. What are you doing? <laughs> Go sit at the back. Be and, sensitive to my <laughs> job with your trauma, okay? Yeah. We don't want to hear it. But <laughs> this is a thing that it, it like happens. It, even if you're not being like, so what do you do? Sometimes mm. they'll be like, excuse me, I'm here because I'm from the U. And we're like, yeah. What do you want me to say? Yeah, and I think at this point we should be able to say so. Like, I don't know. We gotta. What, what's the strategy that we can use? Because I think. I mean, whenever... there's a new war now. There's a war in Sudan as well. Is there a new war? Yeah, there's there's there's, there's a new. There's, I like how we're talking about. There's like there's like wars like the all new over. IPhone, like, yeah, oh, there's a new model out. Let's... All I'm saying is, how how many shows do we have to do to raise money for the Ukraine? Mm. And then if we make a joke about it, we're bad. Sure, and like I've just done, I've done so like okay, I'm not thinking I should get an award or anything, but I I ran quite a few donation shows, uh, sorry, fundraiser shows, and like one of them got like a couple of thousand euro together for it, and then others are like three, you know, I I I put I put in work to um to donate and and support Ukraine, and then I do I do like the shows that continue, um and you know the other ones, but um and that's good, and I'm con- continuing good. to support it. I think the, the, the strategy I take when people in the audience are like, yes, I'm from the UK, I'm just always like, we're so glad you're here. Yeah, that's, like, and that's, that's, that's the, the only, only way you can do it. Yeah, so glad because, you're here. And like, yeah. like I said, I'm going to sound like a dick. Like, I still fully support. I feel like uh, in, in, you can go on Frankfurt early, you look for the Ukraine flag. That's my wife put that there. Like, we, we, we're like, whenever there's a yeah. protest, we like stick it down. We're like, yeah, yeah. You, so yeah. We, we do want to support. But of all course, I'm saying is 
comedy is comedy yeah it's it's uh, and it's also like when people um yeah like whether whether it be ukraine or like some other heavy shit and they bring it up at the comedy show it's like that's what like that's what us comedians do because we know how to make it funny but when you bring it here then we've got to kind of like juggle it you've got to try and make it to try and make it something that's like the worst one i've seen though mm -hmm. there was a guy it was years ago like years ago he was talking to someone in the audience and you know that thing where they're like why aren't you laughing why aren't you laughing oh no so he did that. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's laughing why aren't you what's the problem and the, the girl was like i don't want to say so instead of him going like okay and moving on he was like no now i know there's a story tell me the story oh <laughs> shit she was like you look exactly like the guy who touched me when i was 12 i was like oh cancel oh, C- cancel yeah, yeah. cancel there's nothing you can say you got to leave. There is physically nothing you can say. He left. Afterwards, we were workshopping what he could have said. Like, yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. like, like comedians do. Like, we talk about it. It was like, oh, you could have been like, oh, I'm glad you remember. But that's too far. Yeah, no, no. You can't, you can't go. Like, I suppose my instinctive thing, if, like, someone said that to me, it's still possible. There could be a young boy in the crowd that's like, <laughs> you look like the woman who touched me when I was a kid. I'd be like, well, did she have this birthmark? You yeah. know, like, like I'd try to find something to distinguish myself. So also change it for them. Like, yeah. I think that could be the but only healing thing. But he was good at it. He was like, that's my time. I'm I'm done. That's impressive. I'm, I'm leaving. The, I'm not going to touch. Yeah. And maybe like, a, I'm so sorry. Not that, even. That this, this, that, that this is that. That was, <laughs> it was, there was only like six people in the audience as well. Okay. So it was like really like everyone heard. Oh man, that was a bad oh, time. Oh, rough, 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 rough. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've had any like uh, any like trauma sharing from my audience. I think like I do I do have people share quite a bit with me. Uh, Often when I've got like a smallish room, people will really open up, which is really cool. And um, yeah, because then it gives you more room to work with. Yeah. And it's often often there's enough of a a good energy and goodwill in the space that we're able to work with it. Um, But often also like after shows, people will will share a lot with me. They're like, hey, thank you for saying that joke. You know, here's my trauma. And it's like. Oh, oh okay. Like I already want to. I already want to self harm. Now you yeah. give me this. <laughs> oh my god! Shall we go and like uh, take too many drugs on the toilet together now? <laughs> yeah, that's. I, I I don't get that. I think because your comedy is very much uh, like you're a little bit more edgy than I am. I'm more like my wife did this and I did this. Like you yeah. know, like Seinfeld type of stupid humor. So I think when when you go up, people are like, "Oh, I can relate because she's sharing her pain." Yeah. Let me tell her it's mine. Yeah, that doesn't happen to me. People come to me and they're like, "Yeah, your wife sounds really nice." <laughs> like yeah. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, sure. And that's and the thing is like, um, me doing co- like the way I do it, I I really like that's the intention behind it. It's to make people who have ex- like not to make them, but like me sharing my deep, dirty like. There are times in, in, in me doing comedy that I go, God damn, I wish I just had some light jokes that weren't that personal. Wouldn't that be nice for, yeah. every, for everybody? Well, <laughs> like, wouldn't that be lovely? Wouldn't I just be a Dane Cook, <laughs> please? Right. <laughs> and I do have some, I do have light material. Like I recently had um, my Sunday show. Uh, the whole audience was um, comprised of three girls, two 15-year-olds and a 16-year-old who were genuinely very innocent and uh and it made me like with that show i I take half an hour of the stage time and the comics that sign up get the other half hour i proved to myself that i had 30 minutes of clean material just normal clean jokes yeah that's good yeah which was amazing like because i every time i went to go somewhere a little bit dirty i looked into these girls eyes and i was just like they don't need to hear that yeah like i don't want to be that guy they haven't been married and gone to cambodia yet they have to (laughs) Just even like, like I was going to go, the, the edgiest I was going to go for was just the sentence, I like rough sex. And then I, before I said it, I looked at them and I'm like, they don't need to know about that. Like yeah. they don't, I don't, I don't want to be the one. I like ponies. Yeah. I just didn't <laughs> want it. And so I, I stopped that and I, and I went on different directions, but, um, but why? Yeah. I, yeah. You need that as a comic. You have to yeah. have that 30 minutes of clean. Yeah. And I was really, I even was, if you don't like it, you should have. Yeah. Well, I, 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 all those 30 minutes are all really genuine and they weren't like intended to be clean material. It's just stuff that happens to not touch um, filthy topics and the, actually and there were a few other jokes that I didn't do that would have would have fed into that 
But um, but what I was uh, but yeah, the reason why like my main motivation or sort of like subconscious, but it's conscious driving force and doing comedy is and all my stuff is so autobiographical and it's about looking at these embarrassing things and bringing and making them jokes so that other people feel less alone yeah. and like to, to to make them um to like take everything out of the shadows and be like all right i've had stds and oh i i have this problem being attracted to these fuckwits and i have had an abusive relationship and i, and I am allowed to do whatever the fuck i want exactly yeah, yeah, and i have fair. had sex with you know all of these different types of people and i've had this kind yeah. of sex and you know and just like take shit out removing the shame and so um it just that pimp my jokes last night when i was developing my my joke idea sort of like all the all the stuff that everyone else had talked about was quite light and mine was like my own personal story that was again like quite disgusting and I was just like Jesus but it is what I'm doing and so that's why it does elicit this um these people coming up to me and like yeah because you've opened you've been vulnerable to them yeah exactly they're like oh she's opened up to us yeah let me open up it's only fair it's only fair it's only (laughs) fair it's only you did this guess what I did yeah 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 yeah. Ah, I, I can think of nothing worse than that I'm sorry Honestly, like there was one really heavy night. I had this, uh, my best show during the festivals in Australia. I, it was a Wednesday. I'd sold five tickets and then I got there and there were like 35 people packed in the room, nice. buzzing everyone, like super good Ready vibes. Go. Yeah. And like comedian, like there was a quite a good comedian from Adelaide that was there that was super excited. And then she posted something really nice about me afterwards. And it was a great show. And afterwards there was um, this one guy that came up to me and he shared this story which was just so heavy and it really it knocked me around because he gave me a lot of details and in me trying to appropriately respond he was sort of like please don't be sorry for me but like it was just such now what was the story a heavy story he's so, probably listening right now he's gonna be like don't tell the story oh yeah no i don't, I don't think he'd be listening but... i mean it's, it's not live so. <laughs> listen to my podcast i don't know he was, if he's it, listening in your he's right planted in your house <laughs> no it's okay i don't think he'd be motivated he's he's gay um not that that not so it's not only straight guys that would be in, i don't know anyway moving on from that he um his, his story was because in my special uh in my like so the only solo that i've got right now is uh cream pie curious i cream pie curious um i talk about uh the suicide of one of my ex-boyfriends and um and the details around that like uh, we weren't together when it happened it was three years after we'd broken up um but it really like it really was a big like like breaks on my whole life when this happened because it just yeah like even though we weren't close anymore even though it was quite a short relationship even though it was still a huge thing for me and um and yeah so me sharing that then and i don't go into the details of how he did it or anything but like basically my experience of it and my favorite memory with him and i i love the jokes the, these jokes are like very like I'm, your jokes yeah, i'm yeah. really proud uh, of them and they're really important and it keeps him alive and what and, and it honors his life and I, I really like that i i'm able to do that um so this guy comes up after the show and tells me about how his ex-boyfriend you know, his ex-boyfriend was the same. Like he kept threatening suicide. He kept threatening suicide. It was really toxic. Um, you know, so he would leave. Um, but then his family would call me back up and say that I had to go back and be with him because he was going to kill himself. And, um, and the way this guy told the story, I wasn't sure what happened. And then he was like, you know, and then I found him in the garage and I was like, oh. And he was like, yeah, look, you know, he just hanged himself in the garage. We just had this fight. And I said I was going to leave him. And then um, I I get up in the morning and he was just swinging in the garage. And I was like, like, yeah, so far. That's not a good story to tell after a comedy show. Halfway, like three quarters of of the time he was talking to me. I thought he had an ex that had threatened suicide a lot and he was all good. Turns out this fucking poor, poor guy had had this relationship deeply in love with this guy and was blamed for his suicide and this man died and he found him and it was in his house like all the all the worst possible yeah, like elements the, were in it series of events that led up to that is all like the family told you to go and then oh man that's and then it was like and he it killed himself after a fight and he blamed him and he said it's your fault and like 
all of the yeah. all of the things you fucking pray never happen to you that you get blamed like that and that you find them and all oh just yeah, horrific. I can think of nothing worse than that actually. Like obviously someone dying, sure. Yeah. But finding out like okay, he did this, having to see it and then like figuring out oh and he said the reason is because of me. Yeah, that's and what. that and that you like that whole like never go to bed on a on an argument like yeah, never go to bed angry yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah oh that's a... how hardcore and heavy is that and so this guy's <laughs> sharing this with me and like I've just come off stage having the best yeah. show I've had in like ten days You're like everyone's like hey good show good show <laughs> let me tell you a story and then everyone's like good show you're like yeah thanks uh, I'm gonna go drink now yeah well I don't even know yeah what would you do well after that like um yeah and like we I sort of wanted to round it up he, he was quite he was a bit drunk um but I wanted to you know I was just like when I realized in the story that it had happened like that it wasn't like it was just a thread or but like when I realized in the story I was like hey I'm so like I'm so like that's yeah, a lot man. and I'm really sorry that you've like you know that you're not at fault and you know that it's you know it's and like how are you doing and he was like in this state of just being like, oh no, don't be sorry for me. And oh no, I'm yeah. good. And it's like, it was a good thing that it happened. It was just it's like, perfectly what? okay. I don't need help. I don't need anyone. Yeah. The last time someone tried to confide in me. <laughs> yeah, that sounds. And so yeah. it got harder because he was in a position where he just didn't want any sympathy and he didn't, but he wanted to share it. But it was like, I didn't know how to yeah, navigate you were it. Free therapy for him. Yeah, well, but also, no, because he was resisting any of the genuine, like, what you emotional... Want, yeah, what you, would, what you would expect to give in a situation like that. Yeah, or at least what I, you know, I was but giving still, what I would have wanted to hear, which is the the whole, like, that's massive, like, that, that like, I really rough. feel for you, that's really rough, and that's, like, how are you doing, and, and, you know, it's, you know, like, giving that, but he didn't want any of that, and then it kind of, like, kept, like, the conversation kept going in other directions, and... I really just wanted to give my like care and and um and like love and um you know sort of you combine you know, like, yeah, like hold I just him. I wanted to hold his thing and then kind of wrap it up and get the fuck out of there you know like I just yeah. like but it just the conversation got harder and harder to the point where it sort of went somewhere else and then I was like I've really like I just come off stage I've really got to pee and then we're gonna go to the artist's bar but like you know like yeah. um. And then, yeah, and then I left and, yeah, so that's that was crazy. how it ended. But that was, that was, and I then, wouldn't, yeah. See, I wouldn't be able to deal with that because I don't have like this. You, you were like, I wanted to help. Yeah. I'm, I would have been like, I got to go, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, just realized I left my kid in the car. <laughs> I gotta, and those windows are up. <laughs> yeah. Like, I got I to gotta see you later, man. I wouldn't be able to. I don't want to be responsible for someone else's death. You know what I mean. <laughs> Wow, I love that. <laughs> oh, that's dark. Oh, man. Yeah, it was really... It was... <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> We've all been there, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, so uh, that night it was like... But then the, the owners of um, my venue, um, this guy sort of worked in the in the neighborhood and they were like, we know this guy. And, and he you tells know, the story. He's Yeah, he's got a lot going on. And I um, mean, it's yeah. it's a very heavy story. So it like, you know when... When someone's like, so how's how's it going? How's your life going? And you only have that like one story. <laughs> like, it's like, it's a big thing to get over. It's not like he can just yeah, get over it. It's no. going to be there for like six, seven, maybe forever. That's the yeah. story. That's your story. That's your story. It's you know, like just... Oscar stories. Oh, yeah. Oscar stories changed his story. Actually, it was the whole leg thing. Whose story? Oscar Pistorius. Oscar? You know, the, the legless runner. He's uh, ah, a South yes, African. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so he, he had Pistorius. like a, his yes, story yes. was. Oh, I mean, What's his first name? Oscar. Oh, Oscar Pistorius. Yeah, he's yes. like, I was in, you know, I was. I have, he has no legs. He's got no legs. Mm -hmm. He ran in the normal Olympics, mm -hmm. not, not the Paralympics, because that's where he started, obviously. But he was so fast that he ran in the normal Olympics. And that was like his thing. Like people were like, wow, this is amazing. South African guy. And South Africa loved him. They were like, whoa, this guy. You know, he's running in normal Olympics. He's got no legs. Yeah. But then, like, that was his story, right? So that's a cool story to tell. Yeah. Then he shot his girlfriend yeah. through the bathroom door. Yeah. And she died. And now that's his story. So Absolutely. you can't change your story. That's... You can't change. You just have to shoot someone through a bathroom yeah. door. The best joke I ever heard about him, though, was someone said, he's got no legs, but he's definitely armed. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Uh, that's comedy gold that's comedy gold there's, there's nothing better than that 
What a piece of like, yeah, just the, I remember that story. That was a very famous story. I don't yeah. know why. It made it all the way to Australia. It made it all the way all to the us, way. Yeah. yeah. Jim Jeffries has a whole bit on it. It's like one of the best oh, bits I've he? ever seen. I, you know what? I do need to give Jim Jeffries a little bit more airtime because I need to understand how I can criticize him more. No, I, I respect him as a comic. I do respect him as a yeah. comic. I just, I think he misses opportunities to be a little bit more progressive. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. like, he's not... He's not hiding the fact that he's an asshole. <laughs> like, yeah, I just I wouldn't take advice from a better him. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if he was like, you know what you should do when that guy tells you what happened to his like ex boyfriend that he killed. I wouldn't take that advice. Uh, no. I would <laughs> like <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> if that's I wouldn't a... take any advice. Like he's a, he's a comic that's done really well, and I was super massive respect yeah. for get, like his success and also his writing, fantastic and performance, but just. I think he's missing some opportunities there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. each their own as well. Yeah. Like, same as it's the Ricky Gervais thing. Like, I also like. Well, I, what's the Ricky Gervais thing? Ricky Gervais thing is the Ricky Gervais is a comic that you, if you go watch him, you know he's gonna say some ridiculous shit that makes no sense, right? Like you really? You, I feel like he's very. He makes a lot of sense. No, y- you expect him to be offensive, but it, it, Ricky Gervais says it in a way that it's like it's offensive, but it's not. It's it's not like horrible. So yeah, the, but I, he, I also don't get offended by any. I think Ricky Gervais has a really good, like, the way he, his logic and the way he talks things but out. That's I'm never the offended. Ricky Gervais effect. Yeah. Because you go to the show, you know, this is Ricky Gervais. Yeah. But if you go to an open mic and some random guy comes up, he's like, oh, rah, rah, he starts saying, like, transphobic shit, you're going to yeah. be like, this guy's transphobic. Absolutely. So you, you, when you go to a Ricky Gervais show, you expect him to be a little bit like pushing the envelope. You expect, of course. but you. Yeah. You, you know that that's who he is. Yes. So Jim Jeffries is kind of the same thing. Like you, you you're not going to Jim Jeffries show expecting to learn about, you know, gay rights. Yeah. yeah like yeah. You, you're going to go to the show to be offended a little bit. And then Jimmy Carr, same thing. Although, you, yeah. Although, yeah. Although, it's not Henry yeah. Rollins. It's like, you, sure, sure, yeah, sure. You sure. And like, I, yeah, you don't, you don't go to see uh, Jeff, Jeff, Jim Jeffrey, Jeff Jeffries, Jeff Jeffries. Yes. Um, Jim Jeffries to get insight on politics. Yeah. Um, it's for comedy. But I do think like Ricky Gervais and I think um, uh, even like Bill Burr and even like. Um, they have a good the message. Comic that you, um, Jimmy Carr. Jimmy Carr. Like Jimmy Carr isn't gonna be um, I, like giving insight, but the jokes that he's making, he's making the point. Like the point he's making and making the jokes is to be like, it's a joke. Yeah, and yeah. we can say, and I'm not actually shitting on this or this. It's actually smart because it's what I'm actually. It's saying It's like a is big wrap around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, th- those are the speech. best jokes. Yeah, but exactly. you have to know the person, and the, the joke has to be done in a specific way that it's like, oh yes. yeah, it, it's about trance or whatever it is Mm -hmm. but the bigger joke is this this and this yeah exactly there's there's one that i really like it's it's about trance it's like i don't even i don't even know the comic that did it i just i saw it somewhere but it's like when it comes to the whole full circle thing it's yeah someone complained that you know they said oh you don't respect me because i'm trance and i was like no it's not that i don't respect you because you're a woman which is like (laughs) it's like the bigger the whole (laughs) joke I really like that joke because like, it's such a good. But it's also a joke, you know. Yeah. Of course, the person doesn't not respect someone because they're a woman, it's, or it's just like what? It's such a good joke because it's yeah. like, yeah, no matter how hard you try to get respect for trans, it's still bad because yeah, you're still not respected for it. Like it's such a good joke in like the greatest yeah. scheme of things. I love yeah. these kind of jokes. But if you go to an open mic night where it's random nobody. Well, when and young it, comics are doing it, they don't have the craft to be able to do it well. You know, exactly. like Ricky Gervais could, you know, show up at an open mic and do that material and it would kill because it's crafted. And there's it's how you say it. It's how you say it. And it's yeah. the level of awareness and the, you know, the, um, yeah, the, the dealing with the issue in this like smart sort of inclusive, like when I say yeah. inclusive, it's like including all of the, yeah, in this, yeah, um, it, there's better words the way- for it. It, it's the craftsmanship or the way that he understands comedy in the sense that when you go watch him, you're like, okay, he, I know that he's going to give me something that I could take offense to or <laughs> you can see the bigger picture, as you were saying. That's an interesting point. I think, um, so I've recently had some pe- Okay, so I'll often in open mics, um, if someone says something that I think is politically problematic, 
um, particularly like my open mic where it's a uh, shop to go up, anyone's performing and it's just quick and whatever. Yeah. I will, if something's problematic, I will address it usually on stage right after it happens. Yeah. Um, and like, I'm not like some asshole that's like, you know, making fun of open mic. This guy. This guy. Did you hear that? What a fucking dumbass. He doesn't even get, no. It's more like I'll make some little comment that's quite, um, you know, light. It's not about attacking the performer, but just being like, oh. But just remember that, you know, we, this is a gay friendly show or whatever it is. Yeah. But yeah. I'll often like, just be like, oh, like what? Like trans is the ugly color, you know, yeah. like uh, right. maybe not the ugly color, but maybe just a different color. Like just sort of highlighting the one part in the joke that was the problematic little thing. That's like, just letting everyone know that, that like, that is a that bit of a problem. Fly, yeah. Exactly. And, but and that's right. As a showrunner, because yeah. otherwise you, you get like these, I don't want to say too much, too much about the comedy like scene here, but there are shows where they're like, you got to do, you got to come to our show and you got to do like just the, the darkest, most dingiest things. Mm-hmm. And it's like multiple like showrunners that are running this. And sometimes you go to those shows and you're like, man, this is, it's no longer comedy. Yeah. This is just trying to be offensive for the yeah. sake of offensiveness. And that's also not, com- it's not comedy. It's, it's not uh, comedy. There's a place for it. It's called Reddit. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> Or just Facebook, to be honest. Yeah. Just go on Reddit. You do whatever you want. Just go on your mum's Facebook profile and start writing. Yeah, like, it's perfect. Login is her. Um, no, no, my mum isn't racist. But <laughs> grandma, okay? Let's talk about grandma. But, uh, yeah, like, it should... Yeah. It's, but it's, as a showrunner, you should... And you should also address it afterwards and be like, yo, man, that's not a really good joke. Yeah, and just like, hey, like, careful of that. But like, um, and just how things can be understood. But also, I have been seriously triggered at shows. I think it was only once or twice um, that I've been like really triggered in a show. Once really badly, uh, I was, it was like um, the New York show. I was supposed to go up and I actually, I was so upset by the performance that I saw that I said I wasn't going to perform and I just left. And yeah, I was like, yeah. I was fuming by, because of something that was said. And that experience, like, and, I, and the thing is, in that moment, as a comedian as well, it was like, I didn't go, this guy is super fucked up. I went, no, I know oh la la, I have. It was- <laughs> <laughs> but Playing I- Sherlock Holmes, yeah. <laughs> Well, I know, yeah, the person who it was, I did speak to them after about it. And I was just like, look, I think what you're doing in that bit is you're making women the butt of the joke as opposed to you being the butt of the joke. Jokes always work better when you're the butt of the joke yeah. and you're not making it um, someone else that's like the funny thing to be laughed at. And, yeah. uh, but I like that huge reaction that I had, that was a moment for me to go home and look at what is this wound in here and how am I, why am I so sensitive to this? Yeah, and that's fair. It's on me that I'm so offended. It's fair mm. to a point. Yeah. I mean, there are things that you can say that's just outright offensive. Espe- yeah. like, especially if the joke is coming across and he's like, yeah, so, you know, women, huh? Why do they, whatever. Like They're so much dumber than us. Yeah. Full stop. The, and that's why they don't get paid enough. Or, the, I don't know. There's a way that you go, Sorry, there's a really funny joke. It says a woman's job is never done. That's why they get paid less. Yeah. But even still, for you to say, well, why am I wounded by that? Mm. That's wrong. No, you can't mm. just go up and say whatever you want because someone else might be wounded by something. It's it's true. I do think um, like a comic that is um, putting out shit that is offensive like that, the audience will event like audiences will react and withdraw and they will learn that that's not going to fly yeah. unless they're like just super lucky for a while. And they just have that audience that promotes that kind of attitude. Yeah. And then but they become Anthony Jesselnik. Exactly. Well, yeah. Jesselnik, Jesselnik's <laughs> not like that. No, they become who's, who's abhorrent and um, politically offensive in the comedy scene. Who's legitimately gross. I was going to say Andrew Tate, but he's not a comedian. Andrew Tate is probably the the epitome of the same kind of jokes that they would say. Exactly. So let's look at Andrew Tate. So like the thing is that Andrew Tate's will develop in the world, but a comedian that's like working their stuff out in Berlin, they are going to get, um, they'll eventually le- figure it out. Yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll get it. And, and so, you know, you have to be really dumb like Andrew Tate to figure out, Oh, people don't actually like me. Yeah. Like, unless you go, I'm killing it. Yeah. And then you just live on delusion your whole life. Yeah, exactly. Andrew Tate has that. He's like, oh, well, people love me. Like, 
No, bro. We watch you because we want to see you burn. Yeah, I haven't watched the thing. Like, I, I think I went onto his, his Instagram and then I was like, Ugh. like I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't engage with any of the content at all. I was just like, I don't even know what's happening here. What are I have these a reels? Thing, I have a thing for when I see a reel with him in it, I block their account like immediately. Oh wow, cool. Because like, if you t- train the algorithm to be like, I don't want to see this shit. Like yeah. Logan Paul as well. Like I'm like block. Who's I don't Logan wanna, Paul? Uh, he was the YouTuber who's now like an MMA fighter. Okay. I, I'm not a like I I'm not a big fan of these like YouTube stars that are trying all these different businesses like what's it, Mr. Beast or just block. Oh block, yeah, Mr. Beast. Block like yeah. they, it's all about money and uh, they make their like followers like play games with it like block. I don't want to see it. Like yeah. show yeah, me what, what I'm shit? here for. Yeah. I'm here for comedy. No, I'm here to watch other people fight. I'm, <laughs> I'll stalk my ex and make sure he's having a terrible life. Don't show me. This. <laughs> I haven't stalked a single like I'm, you're you're in a healthy marriage. Of course, you're not doing that. But I haven't I haven't stalked a single. I was what I did want to ask about talking about offensive stuff. Is there anything that you've been really offended by at a comedy show ever? Uh, yeah. So I I get offended by like racism. Yeah. Like, as a South African as well, it's like very like my my reign on racism is very loose. Like, I, there's a lot that I can be like, oh, it's not racist because mm-hmm. in South Africa, every joke is a race joke. So you can go like do jokes that would kill in South Africa, like murder and yeah. bring them to Berlin and people will be like, you're canceled. Yeah. Right? But like I, there was a show that I did a while ago in, in Cape Town and the guy said, hey, what's your name? And the guy was like, yeah, my name's Peter. And he was like, are you sure? Are you sure it's not CBC's way? And I'm like, bro, that is racist. Like that is like en- end of the line. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Like this is the wrong, the wrong thing to say. That's not even a joke in my opinion. Yeah, no, so, it's not. When it when a joke becomes like pure racism, yeah. I'm like I'm offended by that. Yeah. Or, and you might disagree with me, uh, maybe not actually. I don't think there's anything funny about rape. Like if anyone's like, oh, and then they raped each, I'm like that's not funny. I don't. Yeah, know. I I use <clears throat> it. Um, I use what maybe like yeah I do sometimes throw it out there because <laughs> because being like. A primary victim, you know, potential victim of it, it has a lot of power. It's kind of like the word whore as well. Like whore for me because it's being used against me so much. It's one of my favorite words. Sure. And then rape, like I don't make jokes about rape, but like there are moments where it'll be like, um, there are moments where I do think it's like the funniest thing that could come up, but it's like, it's because I'm saying it and I'm talking about me being the victim. Yeah, of it, that's fine. It's like, but yeah. if you, if like, you know, that whole don't drop the soap thing, that's not a funny yeah, joke. No, that's not, yeah, no, like that's yeah, not funny. for me, I'm like, especially as a, as a male, if I watch another male comic do like a rape joke, I'm like, there's physically nothing funny about a rape joke. Yeah. When, when, when or dudes do non, that. Non-victims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's not say men or women, like non-victims. Non-victims, yeah. Right? You get, you get that like, it, it is arguably the worst thing that could possibly happen to a human being to have that happen and then have to live with it. Yeah. Maybe the guy who had his like husband or boyfriend kill him, like I, I would say it's 100% worse than that. Because you, as a victim, you have to then sit there and live yeah. with the fact that you lost all that power. And then for some dickhead to go up and be like, ah, and then he must live every day in prison and drop this. Like, bro, it's not funny. I don't yeah. Know it's, like, anyway. it's, 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 it's always not funny if you don't personally have a buy-in in it. It's just like, why yeah. are you why are you making this joke? Who do you think this is funny for? Like, just you and like your bunch of like high school buddies, you know? like Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> They're the same ones that will turn their back on you when you all go to court. Yeah, <laughs> no, totally. That's the, that's the one. Those are the ones. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I'm with you on that. I'm with you. Like, it, it, it's very much dependent on, like, I can be offended by stuff, very much dependent on who's saying it and how they're sure. saying it, of course. But you get the, yeah. the, 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 the Ricky Gervais effect again. Like, yeah. there's, a, there's a point where there will be a joke about it. Yeah. But the joke has a point. Yeah, and exactly. And then, then you're like, okay, I get it in that sense. It's not outright offensive. Like yeah. the, the, oh, are you sure your name is that and not this? Like mm. that's just, that's just no, there's yeah. no point. I love the, I love the, um, the Ricky Gervais, um, rape joke that he makes to prove that rape can be in a joke, which is, uh, a woman runs into the police station and says, help, help. I'm being chased by, by rapists. And the police officer's like, don't you mean rapists? And she's like, no, there were a bunch of them. <laughs> I love that. That's- How great is that? <laughs> there were a bunch of them. I think it's so wow. fun. 
And he's like, see, now that's a joke. It's funny <coughs> because of the word. It's a play on the word grape and a bunch. And, you know, and it's like, yes, of course it can be in a joke and it can be funny <laughs> because because it's such a powerful topic. It makes the punch oh, so that much was a stronger. Punch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Th- that's yeah. the whole point. It's like, yeah. it, it's also not, uh, it's not like no one's being, you know, attacked. No one's being hurt. I mean, yeah. In the greatest scheme of things, it's a it's a good yeah. joke. Yeah, it's a great joke. But it's not yeah. like outright. So six guys walked into a bar and then yeah 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 anyway. no exactly exactly. Um okay we've got like let's we've got like three minutes let's three minutes um, do you want to talk... longer than any set I've had in Berlin? <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. Kidding. <laughs> Is there anything on the theme of um like sex stuff that you would want to talk about i'm not asking about your relationship or anything but if you have anything uh we don't have to talk about it but i'm just curious would there be i'm any very topic? vanilla You're very like vanilla. we 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 like role playing oh yeah like so i'm like oh are you you know pretend not to be german <laughs> <laughs> that's great she tries she's like put on a suit and tie pretend not to be a comedian <laughs> you know the stuff can you pretend to be employed? <laughs> yeah, can you pretend, pretend to have a job? I'll pretend not to be German. Best sex ever. 7 p.m. under the covers. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't know. We don't. We don't have like. I don't have any of like. Maybe that's why Berlin's not my city because it's a very progressive city. It's very like like um you know like sex clubs. And, yeah. Um, I, I I don't like. I wouldn't be able to go to a sex club. I think I'll yeah. be the guy in the corner. Just eating cake. Just eating cake. Yeah. yeah. Where did you get the cake? I don't. Get I don't it. know. But I don't, that's I really. Brought... I don't want to look at anybody <laughs> in the eyes. This cake is great. Oh, look at the floor pattern. How yeah. Interesting. You want some cake? You should have brought some. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Like. Yeah. I yeah. It's um. My wife wants to go. She's like, we should go to Kit Kat one day, one yeah, time together. And totally. I was like, that sounds like a you and your friends thing. But it would be, it's, it's interesting. Like, you don't have to have your dick out or your tits yeah, out or no, whatever. Yeah, no. But it'd be, I it's interesting in. to look at. I won't get in. I'm Why not cool enough. Why do you think you won't get in? I, I won't, I'm 100% not cool enough. But you just wear, like, a black T-shirt. And then when you get in, you have to take your clothes off to a point. So you can just wear, like, your underwear. No, I won't get in. You need some, like, maybe something a little bit leather. Well, you think I'd get inside and take off my... And show my SpongeBob. They're going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this you guy's... Have, a, you have to try a little this bit. This guy fucks. <laughs> fucks. No, you have to try a little bit. Like, you need to buy, like, something a bit Like kinky. a leathery, yeah. Yeah, something I have, leathery. We have yeah. all the things. We just never use them. Okay, well, then you can take them with you to kick it. The thing is, when you're in the line... You you're dressed kind of normal, yeah, and it's when you get rope. inside that you, nah, no, you just normal, normal for Berlin. Clothes. You just wear normal clothes, and then when you get in, they give you a garbage bag, and you put all your clothes and shit in there, and then it gets tied up, and you get a number, and and then you're in your in your kinky and then you gear. gotta wear the garbage bag. And you don't <laughs> so wear the garbage walk bag. Around. Devin, don't wear the garbage bag, okay? I feel like it would get me in though. You're like, you're like get the garbage, and you're like making a hole for your head. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Eye holes. There are eye holes. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I've heard like the dark rooms. You go in a dark room, and it's like, it's what it is. It's a dark room. Well, at I, I, I don't in, think there are dark rooms. I did a dark room in Vietnam. Oh yeah. There was no one there. Were you the just making photographs? Empty. Yeah. No, the club was empty. We were, <laughs> like I went in, they switched off the light. There was no one there. I sat by myself. That's interesting. That's a weird. You experience. You go outside, and then you're like, why is no one coming? They were like, we knew you were there. <laughs> Because there was no one in the club, though. There was like four people in the venue at well, the time. Well, that makes total sense. Why? Yeah. Dark rooms, like, I don't think Kit Kat really has dark rooms per se. They definitely have, like, little corners and stuff where you can fuck it. Most of the fucking is pretty out in the open. But um, the dark rooms that I've been to are usually more, it's more of a gay club thing, dark rooms. Yeah. Because you go into this completely dark room and you can just hear all of this, like, panting and <sighs> breathing and, like, from, like, lots of different people. And you can hear, like, skin noises and mouth noises. And, I don't like and it's that. completely dark and you go in with like I think gay guys will go in there and just kind of find someone and like it like and start touching them I don't with like some that. level of yeah. consent. I have, I've, I'm yeah. very afraid of this. Whereas I've been in them only like I've been in them with like a friend and gone in and then like use the space. Did you hold hands? Yeah. You're like, bro, just take me through. Let's oh, go. totally. Like, don't... Yeah, though, because it's completely dark and it's like... The, the, some of the dark rooms were Yeah, I mean, it would, it's not called a like a mildly lit room. Yeah, no. It's, it's only like room. the doorway. In the doorway, like, there's a little bit of light and then the rest is just completely... In, in, in shadow and um, I would love yeah. to go into one of them like not maybe not go in but like just during the day like switch the light on and just like have a look that would be very boring 
Yeah, it's going to yeah. be just a default room. But so yeah. is like taking a trip to Robben Island in South Africa. They show you like this is where Nelson Mandela slept. You're like, yeah, it's a, it's it's a, a bed. It's a room. Yeah. Like I've, I've seen a room. I love that you just compared a dark room in Berlin to... <laughs> where Nelson Mandela slept. <laughs> I mean, the same shit happened, probably. <laughs> Doubtful. <laughs> I don't know. Like... It's it, even like any museum when people it's like going to look at an apartment, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, come look at this apartment. You go inside and you're like, yeah, I've, I've seen a bathroom. Like I know. What, oh, this mm-hmm. is the bathroom. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. How much is it? <laughs> like, yeah, you just want to know. Like you can know the apartment from like the first 10 minutes. Yeah, it takes like it takes five minutes. to Yeah. An apartment. Yeah. And so. every time they're like, and this. But this is where me and my wife differ. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, let's go and look at everything. She's like, how much? How big is this? What's the square meterage of this room? I'm like, that guy doesn't know. He, he's just here. And also, like, does it matter? Yeah. It's this big. <laughs> like, like, we're in it. Do look, you need, why do you need the numbers? Like, yeah. That's cute. What if we want to go to Ikea? Then we must measure the thing. I'm like, we're not going to do that. It's You're, true, though. But, like, that probably happens later once you've got the measurements for the apartment. Yeah. Also. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's get the apartment first and then we measure. That's cute. But maybe she it's wants to make thing. an impression upon the agent that's taking the applications by having an, a, a sort of a vested, um, you know, an invested Interest. conversation. Well, we're going to Singapore next week to go look for an apartment. So mm-hmm. I'm preparing, like mentally preparing myself for her to pull out a measuring tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, great. Will the fridge fit here? Will the, like every apartment we're going to view is like minimum two hours. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very Okay, she's a different I love her. I love You've her. Met her yeah. yeah, yeah, she's great. She's a, like very German, very like we must we must make sure and then we must be sure and then we'll move in and then she's like, "Oh, I'm not so sure." Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> like oh, you were sure. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. It's, many many times things have happened like that. She's like, "No, we're sure." Cuz we live on like the main street where all the ambulances come up and yeah. we were so sure. Until yeah. a weekend, and we were like, "Oh, every ambulance in Berlin." Oh yeah, yeah, that's a really loud area. Like every ambulance comes, and then they've got like the 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 work, the street work, so they block mm-hmm. off the road a little mm-hmm. bit, and then the ambulance has to like wait for the cars to move. But it's like still. And there's also is there a tram there as well? It's underground. Oh, you've got this vibrates shots. a little yeah, bit, but yeah, it's yeah, fine. Okay, 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 okay. But the ambulances, I like. I feel like they need to tone it down a bit. Oh, they're so fucking. But this is what I love this apartment for is that it's. You can't hear it? So quiet. I mean, there's probably been one. Nope. Yeah, we haven't heard anything. We haven't heard anything. Oh, this there's definitely been them because um, Zodanale is just there. But it's just it's just removed enough that you don't hear. I lived on Hermannstrasse for a while. And like the Turkish weddings and the ambulances. You can avoid all of them. Crazy making here. Nothing. Fucking nothing. Now, let's wrap it up then. I, I like that we talked a little bit about sex clubs. So where can people find you? Devon Great Comedy. Devin Gray comedy Gray. on all the platforms. Gray with an E or an A? With an A. With an A. And I'm and I'm I'm actually writing my fir- my solo. I don't want to call it my first solo, my second solo because I've done I've done a solo before, but I I've kind of like merged them. So it's my first solo extended. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm calling it How to Get Away with Marriage. Nice. Which I really like. Yes, uh, that's good. And I've got my designs coming in later today, so I'm very Fuck excited. Fuck yeah! Yeah, that's exciting. I don't know where I'm gonna do it, but I'll figure it out and then I'll Ooh. post it on Devin Gray comedy. Or DevonGreyComedy.com. Yeah, and you'll ha- be in Singapore, and then you'll be back in Berlin for a little bit. and then Singapore, Berlin, and then I'm going to take it to Melbourne. I'm going to take it to Edinburgh. I'm gonna You're going to be in Melbourne? I'm going to take... I'm going to try. Fuck yeah, I'll see you there. Yeah, I'll probably have the nobody in the show and like... Shut up. But it's fine. I'm, but it's, I just want to be there. It's about testing it out. It's about knowing how festivals work. It's yeah. about trying it. Yeah. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll see how it goes. I Are mean, you doing Edinburgh this year or it'll be next year? It will be next year because yeah. this year is too late already. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was just like, did you already? Did you try? The yeah, 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 yeah. No, Th- no. This year is way too late. And yeah. like, you have to apply quite far in advance. So I'll yeah. just wait for it to finish and then apply immediately. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. You know? I um, Do it yeah. the right way. But also, if you do Melbourne, then you'll have all your stuff ready to do Edinburgh. Like, it's just a nice, like, yeah. you don't need to prepare everything again. It's yeah. all quite- and being newly married, it'll be about a year in. So I'll have that six months of... Oh, yeah. Travel time. You got lots of riding there. And also just like, yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. And also a bit of a, yeah, but she'll come with you on tour, right? No. Okay. I mean, she, she, I would love her to come. Yeah. To one. But and then I'll go, I'll go to the other's <laughs> bars. It is, yeah. I I really enjoyed doing Adelaide where I was pretty much by myself. And then Melbourne was really good having all my family around. But I'm looking forward to Edinburgh as well where it'll be like lots of comedians and yeah. just like two weeks of intensive comedy 
And then, yeah. yeah and really then you good. come home and you relax. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm looking forward to that. All right. Devon Gray Comedy. Um, AF Barros here. Uh, that has been Adults Only Comedy Berlin. I'm just trying to see if you, I can plug in if, anything. I've got a new show, guys. I've got a new show at Agatha Hopfen every Thursday. Please check that out. That's at the Rav Complex if you're in Berlin. Um, otherwise, that has been the show. It's been such a pleasure to have you, Devin. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And I'll see you later at the show tonight. I'll see you at the show tonight. Backdoor Comedy uh, on Schlesie at Mischlivska. All right. That's been it, guys. Thanks so much. Goodbye.